Hey solar fans, so I'm going to do a quick little video here on uh, these particular solar array isolating devices. These are a device that we used to use all the time, I don't know, about 10 years ago, something like that. Um, in fact, my original system that I'm just looking at over there on the wall right now has actually still got one of these installed, which... Ah, actually, I'll bypass that. That's not in use um, because this inverter has the isolating device on there. Okay, so these these were used um, before uh, we had inbuilt isolating devices on the inverter um, as the isolator for the solar array going to the inverter and also up on the roof inside a weatherproof enclosure, much the same as that one there on the wall. Um, now, the problem with these is they were typically rated for around 16 ounce DC, as, as this one is. Um, but they, they, they often failed and they were quite often the cause of uh, fires and so forth. And I'm going to give you a bit of a, a demonstration on that, hopefully. Um, so with solar panels, solar panels always operate at their maximum current. So you can't necessarily put an overload device on the circuit for a solar array because it won't trip because the solar panels are designed by their very nature to, act, to operate at their maximum current, okay? Um, so if you were to put a circuit breaker or an inline fuse slightly below their operating current so that it would trip you it's actually going to trip or blow the fuse when the panel is close to its maximum operating conditions okay so my point there is that solar arrays can't be protected from overcurrent unless you're paralleling them um, in which case only when there is a fault will there be uh, current beyond what it's to be expected at or what it's designed to operate at. Okay, but that's a, a, another video entirely. So we're just going to presume this is just a basic single string. Um, I don't know how many panels I've got connected to this right now. I've actually just connected it to my existing inverter which I quite often use for testing and so forth. So I've just disconnected this one string going into it um, and put it to uh, that circuit breaker um, or isolating device that I'm going to give you a bit of a demo on. Um, so the other string right now is operating at 8.1 amps and that's its uh, operating current. So what quite often happens with solar panels is if there's a fault, um, the fault can't be managed or mitigated by an over, over, over current protection device. It can only be managed by way of putting measures in place that prevent a short circuit or damage to the cables in the first place. And that's why we have so many rules regarding how we run the solar DC cable such as having to be running conduit, the very type of cable that we use, um, the enclosures that we use, and the isolating devices that we use. Now, we've gone from this device here to a four pole one, and then to the type of isolating device which is on this inverter here. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at now, if you don't have an inbuilt uh, isolating device that is rated uh, to the Australian standards that are required uh, to enable to use that as the sole uh, isolating device. So now what you will see on most solar installs in Australia is you won't actually see these isolators anymore. You'll just have the inbuilt one, okay? Um, and that is approved uh, to operate under operating current with the DC um, to be switched off. You shouldn't actually switch these off under load or them 
and especially the one I'm just going to show you because DC current has a very strong arc um, and unlike alternating current there is no frequency it doesn't break between um, its cycle so it's constant so when there's an arc the arc doesn't extinguish very easily and if that arc is related to a fault um, such as a short circuit to earth or a short circuit between positive and negative then that that arc or that fault will remain constant um, until such time as the sun goes down and the energy stops flowing but even then sometimes that fault can reignite the next day once the solar panels get light on them again and the current starts to flow i've seen them where they reignite i've got another video um, back one of my very early videos where it shows a rooftop isolator that has caught fire um, and you can see me poking it with my screwdriver and it's still arcing and flashing and uh, carrying on so they can be the result of a lot of rooftop fires so a lot of the rules we have in place now are to mitigate that risk and to avoid it happening in the first place so a well installed solar panel system uh, should have a very low risk of a short circuit between positive and neutral or positive um, to earth or in the case of paralleled strings um, to other strings okay but I'm going to show you what used to happen with these and why you should not turn them off under load if you still have one of these installed now this one was removed from a system that had two inverters installed um, one of these had actually caught fire not through being turned off it just simply was probably a little bit underrated it had degraded and it eventually just shorted out internally and caught fire so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and turn oh that's already on so I'll grab my plant meter turn this circuit breaker on all right so that should have current flowing through it now so that's essentially what I've done there is just created the dead short okay so we've got 12.6 amps it's a pretty decent amount so I think this is going to do what I want it to do now what I'm expecting it to do when I try and turn this off under load I'm expecting it not to break contact and to start arcing internally and slowly but surely catch fire now when I turn it off it should flash over and at that point there's nothing I can do I can't turn it on off again or, or anything like that it's just going to keep burning and the reason it did that is because the contacts inside can't handle breaking that amount of current um, furthermore most of these were actually wired up incorrectly you can see there's a positive and a negative on both sides that actually represents the current flow and quite often they were wired up the wrong way um, so that's the current flow and having those uh, requirements means it's polarity conscious it must be connected up correctly to positive and negative um, the new ones are not polarity conscious and you can connect them however you want um, but yeah most of these were connected incorrectly which also led to them failing and um, catching fire so I've got my pliers handy because I'm pretty sure the only way I'm going to be able to stop it is to actually cut the cable all right so let's have a look see what happens there we go that right there is a DC isolator fire and that's how easy it happens all right so I've cut that now with my pliers and broken that look at that look what happened that is a mess so if I wasn't there to cut that that would have gone up pretty quick and uh, could have been a pretty tragic circumstance so my point here is guys don't fuck with these things if you don't know what you're doing all right get a proper solar guy out not just a regular sparky because typically in most scenarios they don't know what they're doing either most of your inverters will have labels on them that say do not shut these down under load and that's why i haven't got one to show you 
but yeah, that's the reason. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I did. Cheers for watching.